In our experience at Chiron, we've heard many instructors tell us that teaching online required them to reevaluate the concepts they taught because they need to be presented to students in such a clear and concise way that they can follow them online, which can be a more limiting setting. So you might not always have the functions that you like in teaching online, for instance, having students seeing them raise their hands or having breakout groups or being able to share one kind of blackboard for your students or whiteboard. But also this can be subject specific in terms of if your subject is more discussion based or if it's more about technical things and having to do exercises and problem solving. So for our instructors, we find that political science and sociology instructors sometimes have a little bit of an easier time because the students will read something before class and then they'll discuss it together in the session. However, our students uh, who take math and physics tutorials and things of that nature, sometimes the instructors have to really think about what types of activities they're asking the students to do in the class. Is it gonna be easy to do as a group? Is it gonna take too much time? Is it gonna be possible in the setting? So one trick that we offer our instructors is to really think about what should go before the session, what should the students be working on on their own, and then how can we make the interactive session as interactive as possible. Another trick that we offer our instructors is if they have a lot of texts or concepts that they want to relate to their students, to put this in a sort of PowerPoint slide that they can share as a screenshot with the students. And another trick there is if you want to make sure that your face is still present in the, for instance, Skype or Google Hangout Meet scenario, you can have two computers, one with the screenshot and one with your face so that the students don't lose the personal interaction with you. Through this process of re-evaluating the concepts and the format of the way you teach, you as an instructor will gain a deeper understanding and a new perspective of the subject matter itself. And by challenging your communication skills in this new setting, you will have the opportunity to develop crucial skills in the 21st century. One of the monster issues that you're gonna face when teaching online is definitely technology and technical issues. We're gonna be spending a whole unit of this course talking about that, so I won't go into too much detail right now. But what I can tell you is this. You will face some technical difficulties when teaching online. There's really no way around it. But the art of teaching online is not so much about fixing these issues in the moment, but rather in how you handle them and normalize them so that they detract as little as possible from your and your students' overall experience. It will, of course, also depend on your setup. If you're on a basic online conferencing system like Skype or Google Hangouts, or if you're on a more sophisticated platform that has enhanced functions or maybe even, lucky you, tech support. But regardless, you should become as comfortable as possible with the thought that things will go wrong and come prepared to develop your own tool set over time to overcome these issues. But again, don't worry, we'll address more of these strategies later in the course. This last one is not something that we can completely prepare you for. We can offer you some strategies and help you get a little bit prepared, but this one really comes down to your willingness and your personality as an instructor, and that is being flexible. As we've mentioned earlier, there are challenges and there are things that will go wrong with online teaching, but a lot of it will come down to how much you can react in the moment and how much you can keep things enjoyable for your students, but also for yourself. The power of flexible online learning can be really incredible for you and for the students. Online learning allows for unprecedented freedom. Students can finally be the agents of their own learning process. But what's the downside of it? In a traditional learning setting, you're provided with a solid structure and a certain level of standardization. In the online setting, you will likely be confronted with students with very different learning paths and they need to be addressed differently. Some of this simply comes down to personality and experience, as I mentioned. Being well prepared for live sessions and comfortable with your content will allow you to be flexible because you always have a plan to fall back on. And a lot of the other challenges mentioned above factor in as well. You can't always foresee technical issues which could affect your lesson. Or if you're working with students who don't know each other or are particularly shy and discussion is an important part of your pedagogical approach, you may have to invest more time into icebreakers over content in the beginning to make students comfortable. We hope we've given you a solid overview of some of the unique benefits and challenges of teaching online in this short video. In the upcoming videos of this unit, we'll go into more depth on some of these, but please be aware that our list is not exhaustive and there are more advantages and disadvantages, some of which you might discover that are unique to you and your experience teaching online. 
The key is to be open to learn and not be afraid of the process. In the following videos and units, we will give you some advice, strategies, and hopefully some confidence to take on this challenge head and computer on. Let's see if you find teaching online as rewarding and enriching as we do.